Hey everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm uh, Jake Lever. I'm a PhD student <clears throat> at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, uh, and I'm also part of the BC Cancer Agency. So I work in a kind of heavily bioinformatics lab. I'm actually the only text mining person in our group, and we do uh, precision cancer medicine. So I'm always thinking about the, the applications of text mining and how the actual users would interact with these things. Um, so a, a, a non-text mining project I work on is uh, studying glioblastoma, which is the most aggressive type of primary brain tumor. And we have a collaborator that actually just kind of screens drugs. And we just get asked, can you just give us a list of drugs that we might as well screen and test these things out? And I think it'd be really cool if we could actually use text mining to kind of find a list of novel drugs and justify them. And they can just basically, you can just buy them online and test them out on the petri dish and see which things work. Um, but that's still kind of a challenge. So that's our kind of end goal, and I'll talk about some of the steps we've taken towards that and what we could do in this hackathon. So I'm very interested in uh, kind of literature-based knowledge discovery or hypothesis generation. Uh, some of you may know it as uh, Swanson linking. It's kind of an idea that's been around for over 20 years. Uh, just a really nice, kind of simple idea of, given all the co-occurrences that we already have, can we predict what will appear in future publications? Um, and the, the way this is often approached is you look at, uh, given two terms, what are the, the kind of intersecting terms that those two appear uh, in papers with? Um, and so this prosium is a, a, a fictional drug from a great film. Um, and uh, the question would be, does GBM, that's the short uh, name for glioblastoma, uh, would we predict that that would appear in a future publication? Uh, but the issue is that kind of current methods use co-occurrences, and as we've seen today, co-occurrences, they're having credible strengths and they're quite easy to work with, but they have certain limitations, like uh, does a drug treat a disease or does a drug cause a disease? So if we can get more information about the co-occurrence, that can be really useful. Uh, and so this is um, where I think we can use some of the linked annotation data that we've already got. Uh, the kind of named entity recognition systems, uh, particularly PubTator, uh, where we have a kind of large scale amount of, um, kind of genes, uh, diseases, and drugs annotated across the text. Uh, our lab's been particularly interested in relation extraction systems for actually trying to identify what the, the relation between entities. And what I'm particularly interested in is when you can do that on a PubMed scale, when you have millions of documents and you've got a certain amount of redundancy in there where you're able to capture things. Um, and so if you have a, a hypothesis generation system, uh, the way you generally evaluate these things, it's kind of the best approach we've come up with so far, is you take all the current occurrences up to a certain in publications up to a certain date, kind of an arbitrary cutoff, say 2010, uh, you use them to train your system, and then you see whether you can predict uh, co-occurrences that will appear after that date, and you compare them to the novel ones that actually do appear. And we've done this and kind of tested out a bunch of different systems for just co-occurrence-based um, hypothesis generation. And so what I'm interested in is uh, hypothesis generation where we have tuples, as in we have the relationship types and we know what the actual kind of interactions between these different things are. And so we know that um, like uh, GBM, uh, oh, that's totally wrong. Ignore that. Prosium, sorry, um, targets tyrosine kinases and the kind of different relationships between uh, these actual entities. And so instead of asking the will two entities appear in a, a co-occur in the future, we asked, like, do we think that they will co-occur as a particular type of relation? Um, but actually getting data to evaluate these systems is quite tricky. Um, so we've created a data set that we get to play with, if you want to do work on this, uh, in this hackathon. And I'll kind of go over the data set. And I'm very happy to talk about the kind of individual steps that we did to, to do this. So we took uh, the PubTator corpus of all of PubMed. Uh, so it's got a lot of different entity uh, annotations in it. And we identify all within sentence, potential in, within sentence relations, and we vectorize them. And we take a distant supervision 
classification approach. And this is based on a, 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 a relation extraction package called uh, Kindred that we've built in our lab. Uh, and another kind of shout out to another tool that we've built is a thing called PubRunner, um, which is a tool to make it easy to run things across all of PubMed and keep them up to date. Uh, so kind of minimize the computation and deal with format conversions and stuff. Uh, so we're trying to uh, use that in all our tools. And so the distant supervision system, as you may have already heard, is where you have kind of a, a certain amount of seed knowledge, uh, and we'll call it an incomplete knowledge base. Uh, in this case, we're using Wikidata, um, which has a lot of links to mesh terms. So you can reasonably easily link it to uh, PubTator, because uh, PubTator also uses mesh IDs for a lot of their annotations or NCBI gene IDs. And so that uh, we just kind of pick three relationship types. These are genetic associations, uh, treatment, and uh, kind of uh, drug targets, physically interacts is what they call it. And so the kind of seed information is in the order of like a, a couple of thousand. And then with distant supervision, you get in the orders of like tens of thousands. And the important one is that in Wikidata, sometimes they have citations, sometimes they don't. But with distant supervision, we know like at the exact sentence where that thing's mentioned. And importantly, we know the actual publication date. We know when it's uh, originally come from. So we're able to generate the same idea of a training data set up to the year, say, 2010, and a test data set after the year 2010. And so the hackathon proposal is to take this data set that we have and basically try out a bunch of different ideas. Uh, the ones that kind of I'm most confident about um, are ones uh, kind of embedding-based. Uh, they've been very popular for knowledge-based construction, which is a kind of similar problem. Um, and uh, tensor-based, where you're doing a, a kind of decomposition. And we, we showed uh, recently that uh, matrix decomposition approaches work really well for the, the co-occurrence-based ones. So tensor-based uh, seems like a reasonable step. And then there's also things like um, meta-pathways or kind of path-based, where you're using more kind of old-school, just like random walks through a graph to, to look at it. And if anyone has any kind of ideas they want to play with, that'd be really cool. Um, so things I'd like to share in terms of data and software, if, if anyone wants to talk about this, as uh, so we've, we've found every relation within sentence relation within uh, PubTator, all 22 million citations of PubMed, and vectorized them. Um, and so that's quite a, a useful resource if anyone wants that. Obviously, the data set for this project uh, I will also mention, I normally work on precision cancer medicine text mining. So I have a few data sets, kind of annotation data sets specific to cancer, if anyone's interested in that. And then the software uh, PubRunner, which I want more people to use, is just makes it a lot easier to run things against PubMed. And what I care about most is keeping things up to date. Uh, and Kindred, which is just a nice uh, Python-based um, relation extraction package. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>